uh, we're going to extract information from the places where the species has been uh, recorded. And um, let's go again. So now what we are going to do is uh, we already see so this uh, environmental data and occurrence data at the part that we're going to tackle with this part of the right angle and demo is visualize this. The idea is that from this data, you yourselves are going to extract this information and yourselves you're going to make a plot where you would see all the environmental conditions of a study area and also the environmental conditions where the species is. So this is the part, the second part of, of today's um, practical. Um, now I'm going to stop uh, sharing this screen and I'm going to again go back to the quantum GIS software. And again, if you see, if you don't see any screen or any part, just let me know. Share. All right, so now you should be seeing the same screen uh, where we left in the quantum GIS, right? Yes, we see. All right, so now we're gonna remove all that data. So this is also part of the practical so that you know how to put data in and put data out. How to do that is right click here and then put uh, select remove layer. Okay. And also this one, remove uh, layer. Okay, so now we, we should have again blank, blank screen. And we're gonna use another plugin now. Not the GBIF, uh, but other plugin. So we go again to uh, plugins, manage and style plugins. <clears throat> then we're gonna look for one plugin uh, called point sampling tool. Again, I already installed it. But when you clean here, you can put uh, update or sorry, install a plugin. Now it says that there is an, uh, an updated, uh, uh, updated version. I'm not gonna do it now because it might take a while. And I'm just gonna use the one that I have. But here is, uh, you can search for it and install that plugin. And the icon, how it looks is uh, this kind of like layers, three layers uh, as you can see in the screen now. So now we're gonna use data that I already downloaded and prepared for the course. Uh, we're gonna use also climatic, uh, climatic data in this part, but uh, cut or delimited to South America. And again, to add these raster layers, remember we, we can use this button or we can go to open data source manager. And then we in under raster, we again search. Remember that the data that we're gonna use now is the one that we, uh, that is on the C-Link uh, file. So you have to download all that information. I have already done it, so I have it in my computer. And then I'm gonna search for those uh, data where I have it. And then we're gonna uh, open uh, the layer called SA Bio One, which is the average temperature in South America. And probably when you download the data, uh, uh, you, you will see that it's, in this case, this is the format, ASC. It's just one type of format for, for raster files. And this is a format that uh, also the next part of the practical using Maxen requires to have this format. So that's why uh, I'm using this uh, format of .asc. But you just click on uh, the bo one and also you can uh, select pressing control and you can select the other one already, 12, and you have both selected. And then you just put open and then add. And then uh, you can just close this window. And then you see two layers here, one uh, bio 12 and other one bio one. And remember that the order of this panel 
here will uh, change which uh, layer you're seeing first. So if I keep on pressing this one and drag it up, then I'm gonna see the other one in case. So you, can, you have to uh, remember that the one that is displaying first is gonna show first here. So we have both uh, the bio one is the average um, mean temperature, uh, annual mean temperature, sorry, of South America. And this other one, uh, bio 12, it's the rainfall. And if, when you uh, select this um, uh, raster, if some sort of another pop-up window appears, then the instructions for uh, doing so, it's in the, in, the, um, in the PDF, in the instructions, but it's some sort of current reference uh, system and there the instructions are there in case you get this uh, extra window in case you do, the instructions are on the, on the slides. And um, once we have the data here, you, if you want also, you can change the colors uh, to pimp it as, as you want, as, 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 as the range, range of colors as, as, you, as you're interested. But we won't need this uh, pimping the colors at this stage. So what are we gonna do next is uh, add the species occurrence date. And how do we do this? Um, we go again to this uh, option of adding um, data sources, but we don't use raster, but now we're gonna uh, select the option, the limited text. All right, and then here we're gonna browse through another file that is in our data in the C file link. And then uh, it's under occurrence data and it's uh, one called Brazilian nut. So we're gonna use uh, a file called Brazilian nut and it's in the format C CSV. So we just uh, select that one. And in this screen, um, if, it, if it's not automatically selected as CSV, you, you should be careful and select this one. And then uh, if you go here to geometry definition, then um, you need to select uh, here, the X field in this case is gonna be the longitude and the Y field is gonna be the latitude. And this CSV file, you can also open it in Excel if you want to see what data it has, but mainly, it's, it's, it's a file that has the following columns, as you see here summarized. It has this, the species name of Brazilian nut, and it has longitude and latitude. So from this uh, table, then I'm selecting the column longitude as my X field, and the column latitude as my uh, Y field. That's all I'm doing here. If this doesn't display this uh, CRS, the coordinate reference system, you can select it here, select and make sure that it's the same uh, WGS84, all right? In case you don't see it like, like, like here. And after you have set all of these uh, parameters, you just click add and you uh, close this window again. So now you see uh, the records, the locations where uh, this species has been found, this Brazilian nut tree. And what's next now is uh, we want to know what are the main uh, the conditions, the environmental conditions in our study area, in this case, all South America. And we're also trying to find what are the environmental conditions where these uh, points are located. So that's what we're gonna do next. And uh, these points that you see here, uh, I also downloaded it from, from GBIF, the same procedure as we saw before, and I cleaned it. So I also checked whether there was some uh, special inaccuracies. And so this is a clean uh, version of this data, all right? But it's from the same source as I presented before. So what we are gonna do now is we'll find out the climate conditions where um, the species 
was recorded, all right? And to do this, we're gonna select uh, the, the option or the icon called Point Sampling Tool. And what this Point Sampling Tool does is for each point, each coordinate, it will extract uh, all the layers that we have. For instance, we have two layers now. We have uh, Bio 1, which is the temperature, and Bio 12, that is the rainfall. So for each of these plots, these points, I'm going to extract which value has from uh, temperature and a rainfall. So what I need to do here is make sure that in case you might have other files open, make sure that here is the one that you want. This is the point data of Brazil Nut, so that's the one we're going to use. And here I'm only interested in extracting the values from the mean temperature and the bio uh, rainfall. So if you want to select both at the same time, again, you press uh, control and select at the same time both. And then what you need to do is uh, save this or uh, yeah, go to browse and let's put a name now. So we're gonna go to our folder, whatever you have uh, done it. And then I'm gonna name this um, Brazilian nut, as it was, Brazilian nut, but extract. So it's, it's easy to see what it is. And then in the type, uh, in this case now it's a geo package, but we're, we're not gonna select that. We're gonna select comma separated value. So it's a, a type of, of file that would be able to open, for instance, in Excel for simple uh, analysis. So we select CSV and then we uh, select save. And then okay. And then there's here also uh, a tick here called add created layer to the map. We don't need to do that. We're just gonna untick that and put okay. And the thing, uh, if you get that uh, warning message, just put uh, okay. And that's it. So what we have done is extracted um, the environmental conditions from each or one of these points. And if we want to make sure that we got the data, I'm gonna stop sharing this screen now. And I'm gonna go where I saved this file. Uh, I'm gonna open that file so, and, and so that you can see it also. I'm gonna share the screen just in a minute. So now it's an Excel file where I have for each one of those points, I have the temperature and the rainfall. That's what I did. It might be the case that your uh, settings of your laptop or your computer have different uh, Excel settings according to each country has each uh, regional settings. My computer enables it to uh, normally see this CSV file as normal. Okay, in case you're not visualizing that as I can see in two columns, but everything is compiled in just one column, what you need to do is uh, select the column where you have this uh, weird information and then you have to go to data and then you should select the option text to columns. And then uh, there's an option called delimited. So you keep that one, put next. And then according to the settings of your computer, if the decimals are separated by, by space or by colon or semi, semicolon, by comma, sorry, semicolon or space or whatever, you need to choose the one that your computer is in case you're having these formatting issues. Uh, but you could select uh, all these tab, semicolon and comma, just in case, and then put next and then finalize this and then you should be able to have it in different columns okay but again if you're having some issues with this formatting uh, let me know and I could help later later on but now we have all the environmental conditions where the species is and what we can do with this 
uh, we can, for instance, and as you can see, there might be some blank spaces. So you can also delete those spaces because we're not interested in those, in those spaces. But then what we could do is also see, uh, I could select all of those average temperature values and I could say, okay, the average temperature where my species is occurring is 25.9. So we kind of like have an idea of what uh, conditions or in which conditions the species is occurring. This is for temperature, but we could also calculate the, the average or the mean or any statistics that you want. And it's occurring, uh, and we can calculate an average also more than 2000 millimeters of rainfall. So this is a nice way of, of knowing a bit uh, about our species, extracting the environmental conditions where our species is um, located. So that's one part of this um, uh, practical, extracting the locations, the conditions where my species has been recorded. And the later part, we also want to know uh, what are the conditions of all the study area. So we can visualize it in the environmental space where the species are, not only in the geographic space, but also in the environmental space. And to do uh, that, um, we're gonna add, first of all, uh, no, not at this point. We're gonna, if we want to characterize um, all the conditions in South America, one option is for each one of these pixels that you see here, we, we extract the value, but it would take a lot of, uh, of time and it's uh, quite heavy. So what we're gonna do is gonna create a random uh, set of points throughout South America, all right? We're gonna put random points in all of this uh, area and then we're gonna do the same exercise. We're gonna extract uh, all the conditions within uh, South America. So the idea is to know what are the conditions, in this case, climatic conditions of all South America. So that's the, this part, what are we gonna do now? To do this in particular, uh, we're gonna uh, first add another type of layer, another uh, format of layer, uh, which is a shape file, okay? And, and to add that, we again go to this uh, open data source manager and not raster, but now we go to vector, okay? And then we also browse to the same folder where we had the other data. And it should be under shape files. And then uh, here you see lots of, 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 of formats and quite a lot of uh, endings here. We should focus on the ones that say South America and the one that says .shp is the format of shapefiles. So we only select that one, the one that is .shp. And we just click open. And then close this. Um, then you, you should be able to see on your screens a, a map or let's say the, all the countries in South America. So once we have that layer, we're gonna create a random set of points within that, that layer. Why? Because we want to characterize the environmental conditions of South America, all right? So now what we're gonna do is uh, go to vector, sorry, vector, then we go to research tools. If you download it, uh, the quantum js software the recent one you should be able to see all of these options without uploading or downloading anything in case you're not seeing it i could give support after this uh, research tools and then we're going to select the option random points in layer bounds so we're going to select which layer do we want to put these random points in and then we select, in this case, the layer South America, as it is now, South America. And then we're gonna uh, create a thousand random points throughout South America. So we put a thousand points there. And uh, that's it for now. So we just uh, put run now. 
That's all you need to do. And it might take a while also, uh, according to your, your computer. So just be patient. Uh, I want to put 1,000 points uh, uh, because this is a procedure that is done inbuilt in Maxent also, and our algorithm. So the idea behind this is that you know all the different parts that an algorithm does automatically. So we're doing part of the job of the algorithm now because uh, it's not just nice to put the data and run the models and ju just like that, but you understand what is it actually doing. And what we're doing now is part of what algorithms or software do automatically. So for instance, Maxent does these random background points that you could put a number. In this case, we're putting 1,000 uh, points. And let's be patient. Do you see all the screen now? Yeah, we see that orange map and in front it's random points in layers bones. All right, great, good, good. So now my random points are done. So now we have set random points, a uh, thousand random points throughout South America because we want to characterize the environmental conditions in South America and we're just doing this randomly. And uh, we can also remember drag this up, up or down to visualize uh, this. Or if we don't want to see it, we can just untick this. And I'm gonna put first the Brazilian nut uh, points up. And then you, you should have something like this if you follow the same order. We have the points where the species is and the points that we're gonna use for characterizing the environmental conditions of the study area. And uh, what's next? We're gonna extract um, all of those points from South America. Uh, we're gonna extract the environmental conditions from those points. So we're gonna do exactly the same as we did with the Brazilian nut points. So what do we do? We go to um, this icon, which is point sampling tool. Then uh, remember, we're, we're not gonna extract Brazilian nut, but uh, the random points that we set in South America. And again, I'm only interested now in the average temperature, bio, bio one and rainfall, bio 12. I select both and again, I'm gonna save this in my folder, whatever you want to. And in this case, I'm gonna save it as background extract and then the same format. Uh, CSV, comma separated value. And then I just click, click save. And again, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to add this in my layer, uh, into my project, so I untick this box and click OK. If you get this uh, warning or, or, or issue, just click, uh, just click yes. And now it's extracting all the environmental conditions from these thousand points. And I just close it. Now, to see if this was done correctly, I'm gonna stop sharing this. And then I'm gonna open that uh, layer that I just created. And I'm gonna share it again. Uh, now you should be able to see it. So it's quite similar than the one we, we saw before, but now it's not the the Brazilian nut, but it's the background data. So again, uh, we have all the values from each one of these thousand points from temperature and uh, rainfall. And what I want you to do now in this part is combine these two and make a graph so that you can see in all of this range of environmental space where my species is. And um, to do that, so you, you will have to open both uh, Excel files. In this case, you're seeing just the background uh, data. And we're gonna make a simple plot here in Excel. What I'm gonna do is uh, also copy the values. Um, I don't know which screen you're seeing now. Uh, are you seeing the Excel file? Uh, yeah, yes. just background. And do you see now uh, Excel file with four columns? No. Uh, no. 
All right, wait a minute then. Do you see now four columns? Yes. yes. Yeah, so what I did is just from the Brazilian nut and the background, I, I pasted in the same uh, sheet, that's it. Uh, this is uh, from the background. I, I put, I'll put background if I want, so I remember what is it. From background, this is also from background, and this is from the species. But the, the four columns have the same numbers. No. Yes. Sorry. It does not. It looks like the columns ah, are the same. I think yeah, you're thanks, a thanks, mistake. Th yes. Thanks for. I copied the wrong one. Thanks. Good that you noticed. Okay. This should be it. Do you see now the um, the four columns again? Right? Yes. All right. So the one that I, uh, so now we have the temperature and rainfall and um, of both the environment, so the old South America and the species. So what I'm going to do now is just select uh, these two columns and I'm going to make a simple plot. So I'm going to insert a simple scatter plot. So what I'm seeing now is, uh, so I'm just going to delete this, and it's just a scatter plot showing the temperature and the rainfall. But I can uh, also add to this graph if I copy Control C this one, and on the same place Control V, uh, I can also change these columns and in the same graph I can see well the areas where the in this case uh, well perhaps now it's it's background but the blue dots that you see are the environmental conditions uh, that exist in all South America and these uh, other colors that you see here uh, the orange ones is with all of that environmental space uh, the locations where the species is occurring. So this is a, a simple way of visualizing, visualizing, uh, for instance, the niche. We're now in the environmental space. Uh, but perhaps I could put this layer first so that it's on top, right? So I'm just going to copy this. Just wait a minute. I mean, this, this technicalities of Excel, it depends on, on, on each one. You could do it much faster or or slower, but there's no right, right or wrong here, okay? So I'm just gonna do this a little bit more simple again. I'm gonna do it again. Perhaps someone of you is, is, is more keen on doing these plots, but okay, so now I have that. All right, so now we see it a little bit more clear. So this is upside down now. Uh, we have the red, the orange plots is all the possible environmental conditions in, in South America. I'm just putting now uh, two dimensions, all right? Ima imagine that this is in a multi-dimensional space, but to, to, ma to make it easier to grasp what are we gonna do, uh, we're just putting it in two dimensions. We have the temperature here and the rainfall here. I think in the instructions, uh, I did it this way also, temperature in the X, uh, X axis and rainfall in the other one. And on blue here, we see the locations where the species is within all these environmental conditions. So uh, before we finish this part, and you can do it yourselves if you haven't been following or doing at the same time, um, the idea is that we'll try to uh, delimit this space, all right? So the idea is that we will try to put some boundaries to this space where the species is and try to model that space uh, and then project it back to the uh, geographic space. 
So that's the idea behind this, this, this um, part of the practical. I could put it, yeah, anyway. But the idea is that we'll try to uh, model this, this area. There's different algorithms, as I said, that would delimit this space in a different way. Some are just boundaries, so the max and the mean in these two axes, so it's kind of like a rectangle. And those are more simple approaches. That's how it, it was done at the beginning. But then there's much more complicated ways of delineate, uh, delineating this. So it could be a really perfect way of delimiting and different algorithms do it in a different way. So that's, that's the idea behind this part of the, of, the, of the practical, all right? What all you need to remember or save from this is that you would uh, copy paste this graph that you will make yourselves. Uh, and that would be part, that should go to the final tasks uh, of this 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 uh, species distribution model. So when you do this, take a take a copy of this of this plot, and also uh, calculate the average temperature and the average rainfall where the species is. So just those two two values. That's what I wanted to show how it's done. Now I'm going to stop sharing, and then we're going to go right on directly to you do it yourselves. And I'm going to give support, or everyone could give support to each other now. <laughs>